Hello and welcome to the Falcon Focus Podcast. It is Tuesday and we're live from now until 1015. Live on Facebook Live, archived on cuwfalcons.com. You can download the audio thanks to Podbean and listen through iTunes. My name is Matt Menzel and on today's show we talk men's tennis. That with sophomore Cole Orning. He'll come on in our second segment. But first we talk softball. Fresh off winning the outright knack softball championship their first since winning the old lake michigan conference in 2002 and to, to talk softball we turn to the head coach back for his 20th season steve crook and coach thanks for your time this morning and exciting times for the softball program yes, you go back to 2002 it was your third season at the helm what do you remember about that conference championship squad you, you know matt being here as long as i remember we probably think about things that the weather was the same I guarantee you that <laughs> A lot of the same competition. The schools are in the same boat, so we play those schools. But um, the quality of student athlete has really been the same. Maybe softball's changed a little bit, but uh, those were exciting times. We had some great kids in that era of program, and a lot of them you called in the North Shore high school games. We've known each other that long, so yeah, that team went 22 and 11. You know, you talk about the weather. You talk about you know maybe perhaps the play to some degree. Are there a lot of similarities or comparisons you can make between that conference championship team and now here in 2019? It's really a different game. I think the the kids, the talent one through nine is just completely different. I mean, we had some great players in that area. Tiny Rothenberger, Julie Barthel, Jansen. Uh, they were fantastic softball players who didn't matter when they would have played. They'd have done very well. But the game has changed. Pitching's evolved. Hitting has changed quite a bit. Um, and hopefully I've grown as a coach as well in those 20 years, man. It's funny you say that because I was about to ask you that, that next question. When you look at your career as a coach, or the all-time winningest coach in program history, how do you feel you've evolved as a coach from, say, back in 2002, that's your third year, yeah. and uh, you guys improve year by year, but then all of a sudden now, here in 2019, where this team's constantly winning 20-plus games. Uh, before we got here, you sit back and you look at all the people I've been fortunate enough to coach with. Those are people that have impacted me. Uh, Rod Wilterdink, uh, Jessica Lukey was my first assistant coach. Our current staff of, of coaches is, is phenomenal. Um, Caitlin, Patrick, uh, Dr. Steele, um, Jeff, um, Allison Peters, RG. I think you get impacted by that opportunity. But if you don't grow with the game, um, people don't understand this. And sometimes I'll name drop. We've, we've sat in these coaches' conventions and talked with Pat Murphy and, and uh they're doing a lot of the same things we are because we go to the same conventions. But you got to go and you got to learn. And um, that's a great thing. I think our community of softball um, is very open to that and sharing. And, you know, I love watching the game. I watched Alabama play Kentucky the other night. It's a great game. I don't know how people can't just be captivated by it. You look at this program, and it is 11 consecutive 20 plus win seasons. When you look back at the last decade plus, what do you equate that success, that consistency to? It's getting the right kids. Uh, we preach this all the time. If you don't get the, the student athlete uh, and the student part comes first, this is a tremendously stressful time. You know, we, we look at this time as uh, finals and stress enough, but now you throw in playing 20 games in a span of, you know, gosh, four weeks for a conference or 22 games. You've got to get kids who are smart enough to handle that. And then you've got to be versatile. Uh, you don't come to college and say, I'm a third baseman. We recruit kids all the time, and we'll say things like, you know, you need to be understand that you're going to probably play a different position. Uh, so our recruiting philosophy is to get players who can come in and play different positions, and I think that's held up pretty well. Um, this year's group, though, is different. I mean, we got some depth um, at pitching. That's been a trademark of our program. But two or three deep, well, this is a staff that's five or more deep, which is absolutely um, unprecedented in our program's history. So that's going to make this group a little bit different than most of those other teams. We'll talk about the pitching as we go along because what's impressive, too, about this pitching staff is they're young. I mean, it's essentially all freshmen, and so we'll talk about that in a second. But you look at this year's team, and right now 24 victories, nine defeats, 19-3, and three, their final conference mark and winning the outright title. The team's won nine of their previous ten. Last week, ranked seventh in the second regional rankings that came out. And this is a squad, too, that was predicted to finish in sixth. Now, granted, a lot of that's based on last year's happenings, but when you look at the key, what has been the key to the winning ways this season? Well, before you go to pitching, I go back to this one thing, and that's leaders. Uh, we have four awesome seniors 
Uh, we have a great junior class. They show up, they play hard every day. And uh, to be honest, Matt, you can't accomplish this if you don't have that. Every coach is envious of teams who have that. Um, we're really lucky with that. Even though we have a young coaching or pitching staff, um, and Nicole Lewis and Jenna <clears throat> Posizinski aren't playing a lead role in terms of innings pitched, they're playing a lead role in mentoring these kids, these young players. And then you got a senior catcher in Sam Schumacher um, to go along with Taylor Kuski. But those kids, I'm telling you, Sam Schumacher, uh, that, that's senior leadership. And that does impact that group, right? Um, and we're at the point in the year where part of coach speak is to say there's no more freshmen, right? And we've told them that. Uh, we got back from Florida and said, you're all returning players. And uh, that's been an attitude, I think, that, that they've adopted and taken on. Well, Gina Falwell is one of those freshman pitchers who has really come on strong. It typically is the game one starter in double headers. And right now with 10 victories, four defeats, an ERA around two, 109 strikeouts, as many as nine strikeouts in a game, four times. And she's won her last now six decisions. What's made her so successful? Gina came in with a lot of great skills. And I think that physical skills are a place to start. Most high school kids realize very quickly that you need to adapt and become a pitcher and have a strong mental game. It's beyond the physical parts. Gina's adapted. Uh, I also think that having a staff takes the pressure off. If you look at our other aces over the years, our ones, they, are, they threw a lot more innings. Uh, even going back to Sarah Renneke, those, those players over the years have thrown a lot. Um, we took pressure off even in the Dominican game. Uh, Nikki came in relief. She hadn't done that. Nicole Lewis got the second game start. Peyton and Alyssa, those kids are all pitching. That takes pressure off that ace. So if she has a day where she's not absolutely lights out, um, there's other players who can step up. But I do give her a lot of credit. She's put in a lot of time, worked very hard, been very coachable. As mentioned, four of the five pitchers used are a freshman status, and this is still a team that's got a collective ERA of 2.39. As you mentioned, okay, you take the freshman label almost away at this point yep. because they have a full college season under their belt, but did it come as a surprise, or is it a surprise maybe, how quickly these freshmen have been able to rise to the challenge of, coll of collegiate softball and in the circle, having the success they're having? You know, you, you never want to get ahead of yourself as a coach. We understand that, that part of this whole thing is a process of growth, hard work and growth. But in, in a large way, we were not surprised. We knew we had a lot, very talented group. And honestly, this is going to sound, we've been, in the, we've been competitive in this program to be on Saturday in the conference tournament way more often than not. Mm -hmm. I think I look at it and go, last year was a surprise. Um, we didn't expect to be there falling out of the tournament for only the second time in 20 years. So we have high program expectations. Um, players know that when we recruit them. Uh, we're gonna try to make life balanced, but we are going to tell you that our goal is to not only get into that conference tournament, but, but make some noise. So I think our confidence in our program, you know, transcends maybe that being younger um, thought process. Now this offense is something special. You look at the offense, a lot of you've been able to produce, you know, Seems like every game good for the big inning, the rally. Doesn't matter what deficit may be. This team has a comeback in them. Even if you fall short, there's a comeback. There's a fight. Team right now hitting 347, which would rank second in team history, second in the conference. 29 home runs. That's tops in the conference right now. Second in program history. How confident are you in this lineup that you have on a game in game out basis? I, I think of the moments in the sixth and the seventh inning when we've had to rise up, and it's been different kids. That's the amazing part. Uh, there are some players who set the table, and there's players who come up with a big hit and the big extra base hit. Um, base running's been phenomenal. I, I think at this point, they've only proven to me um, that there is nothing that we can't do. Um, and Matt, I'm a numbers guy, so I sit back and I look at years with Kara Landhair and Abby Gage and that whole crew of kids who could hit, and Mariah and, um, oh my gosh, Carly Slabrilski. We've had some really good hitting teams, and our coach's conversation is, we're, a, we're this is a special group of hitters, one through nine, like maybe never before. Um, so yeah, it's tremendous. 
got a photo bound about a minute ago before that, yeah. that question, coaching yep. staff players. What do they have to start? Because you see the, the post-game interviews on CWFalcons.com. Seems like, I mean, you're part of it too. Yeah. Photo bomb and the interview in the background. What do they have to start? Um, Jenna Pozazinski, who's had a phenomenal year, uh, was being interviewed in Florida. And, um, and I was walking out of the restaurant, and uh, I just decided that I was going to, you know, make my appearance. And so I uh, walked right behind her. Uh, at that point, Jenna completely lost it. Uh, if you watch that interview, and I strongly encourage all of you to do that, um, you can see that Jenna completely lost it, and the team had some fun. Since then, honestly, it's been an opportunity for all of us just to enjoy it. I, I think part of this whole thing that gets lost in competitive nature of sports is, is the fun part. And there's a goal for us as a team to take care of business and, and have a good time. And uh, I will truly tell you that, uh, that this is a special group of kids. Uh, they know how to have fun and yet zone it in. And I think the coaching staff and I have really enjoyed that. And, and we talk about echoing, but we've echoed in the fun. Yeah, you, you know, you, you speak individuals too and what they've been able to do. And that leadoff hitter, Molly O'Connell, you have Maddie Zazas, who's now the program's all time leader in career hits. Jenna Pozazinski with the 10 home runs this season. That's tied for second in program history. Becky Bond, and the list goes on and on and on. Well, let's talk about NAC tournaments. I know you run out of time and you have all conference. Uh, to go over with, with other conference coaches here this morning. But you look at NAC tournament, and that starts Thursday, 6 p.m., the scheduled start time for the Falcons down in Montgomery, Illinois, hosted by Aurora. You either get Marion or Dominican. And you look at the, the six teams that qualify for the tournament. I mean, yes, the Falcons are your number one squad, but there are so many teams that are playing well going into the tournament. You have Marion 8-2 and two in the last 10. MSUE's won 13 consecutive. Aurora's 9-1 in the last 10. I mean, it's, it really is a, a who's soon. There are a lot of teams coming in red hot. Our conference for softball um, is a conference that we, we know um, we have an op opportunity to get in at large. Uh, Aurora has done very well in the postseason. As a matter of fact, two years ago, I thought we deserved an at-large. We sat in the room. I think people thought we, we were a little crazy. Absolutely. We had to be one of the first teams out. Uh, I know we have that respect. There, there is, going into this tournament, um, six teams that are playing good ball, and we respect them all. And seriously, uh, I do believe that if I, we played a lot of different conferences throughout our preseason, this is truly a, a, a conference that deserves to have two teams in the NCAA. They're that There's that much depth. You mentioned it earlier, and it, I mean, all you have to do is look back at the archives to, to, to you know, prove your point. This is a Falcon team traditionally is a tough out when it comes to this double elimination format. Falcons do have a couple of conference tournament titles, one in 2006 in the, the final year of the Lake Michigan Conference, and then again in 2009 as a number six seed. When you look at the team's tournament success, in your opinion, is there a formula for or a recipe for that success? Is there something that, again, you can equate that to? I'm going to say first and foremost, it is keeping kids. You know, you talked about Molly and Maddie and Sarah, and we talked about Sam and certainly Becky and all those other kids. You've got to keep upperclassmen. You've got to have a mix to that. We've been able to do that. And then you've got to have pitching. Uh, if you roll into a conference tournament with one pitcher, there's only been one time in my recollection that that's really worked for a team. Um, otherwise, you get worn out. Mm -hmm. um, the bats are hot this time of year. And so uh, we have the pitching depth to do that. I think we're playing good enough defense, and certainly we have the bats. But I think the formula is there's got to be a, a pitching depth, and I think we have that. Well, for you, okay, a couple of decades at the helm, outside of regular season and tournament championships, NCAA tournament appearances, what are some of the highlights or memories that you have in your two decades at the softball helm? I, I will uh, tell you that the, the best part I can ever tell you is that when I, we won this uh, championship, our alumni sending text messages. The list is too long for me to tell you, but to, to hear back from them, you've heard me mention Sarah, and you've heard me mention Cara and Abby and Carly, uh, Jamie. Uh, there are a lot of kids over this time. Lexi's health coach. These young ladies have left a strong impression on me. It's by far and away uh, the greatest joy of coaching is to not only have coached them, but to see them uh, later on as we go through this and, and to hear from them when we win. So thank you guys. So so would you say that's what you're most proud of when you, when you look back at your time with this program? Is Absolutely. The culture you've built and, and the connections you have, not only with the present, but also the players from the past? Without a doubt. Uh, I cannot tell you, uh, when you when you build something, and people call it team culture, but when you build something that people are appreciative of, um, those relationships continue. My reply to one of my alumni this year, you were a great player, but you're a better person, and now I call you my friend is a real honor. Well, Coach, 
Best of luck this week. Thanks, We're man. cheering for you. Starting Appreciate Thursday it. as the uh, team goes for their third all-time tournament championship. Falcons are your regular season softball champions and still work to be done. That's head coach Steve Crook. When we come back, we switch gears to men's tennis and talk with sophomore Colt Warning. Stay tuned. You're tuning into the Falcon Focus Podcast. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Falcon Focus Podcast, episode 29. We are live until about 10.15, live on Facebook Live, archived on cuwfalcons.com. You can download the audio thanks to Podbean and listen through iTunes. We now switch from softball, get ready for the NAC tournament, to men's tennis, get ready for the NAC tournament this weekend in Madison, and being joined by sophomore Colt Warning, who's part of the, the men's tennis squad, who right now, at 15 victories, seven defeats, went eight and one in conference play. Cole, thanks for your time this morning. You know, I, I mentioned the records, but your thoughts on the way the season's kind of played out to this point? Um, season's kind of played out the way we expected. I mean, we didn't. I mean, we expected a tough one against Illinois Tech in conference, and they gave us a tough one. But I thought we put up a good fight. And non-conference, I think we won the ones we knew we were going to win, and the ones that we didn't win were close, and at least a good fight. For sure. We'll talk about Illinois Tech a little bit later on because it's a potential opponent this weekend, a new member of the conference, the lone blemish in conference play for the Falcons. But the Falcons able to beat Edgewood, also Lakeland, this past weekend. One seven straight now, heading into the, the NAC tournament. Do you like where this team's at right now as far as the confidence and, and where the mindset is going into the tournament? Uh, I think the mindset, even after that loss, was, I mean, it almost shifted right back to Illinois Tech. I mean, I think it hasn't been. On ten, it's been more so how are we, we going to beat these guys, how are we going to beat Illinois Tech in the conference tournament, more so than how are we going to prepare for our next match because I think we are confident in our skills that we could handle all the rest of the wins for the rest of the year after Illinois Tech. We'll talk about you in a second, but outside of you, who are some of your teammates that are, that are playing well right now, in your opinion? Uh, I think everyone's kind of tying the pieces together. I think uh, no one's got a grudge on his uh, chip on his shoulder he definitely can come he was really close beating Illinois Tech's one player we'll see that in the term and I think he'll pick up a win for us um I think really everybody's just playing well for us right now I think to an extent I don't I don't see 
no one playing bad in the tournament. I think it's going to be very focused tennis. Now, for you, it's kind of been a change this year because your focus has been doubled with mm -hmm. the exception of one singles match. A little bit different from your freshman year. Is that by design? Is the hope maybe to, to work your way back into that singles lineup at some point down the road? Yeah, uh, we have a lot of good singles players mm -hmm. on our team, and I think the I mean, I think everybody can play singles. I think I can play singles at six just as competitively as another player. Sure. But I think um, right now, yeah, being only in doubles, it allows people like Tim Peters at six. It allows him to focus on singles and really grind down on singles and pick up wins. And for me to focus on doubles, double strategy, getting better at doubles to maybe grow up that line in that lineup throughout the next two years. So. Gabe Inversi has been your, your doubles partner in the last couple of seasons. Is there a comfort level now, you know, having played together in the last couple of years? Did it take some getting used to maybe in year one? Um, well, in year one when I first started, I was playing with CJ okay. um, Schaffner and Brad. So I, I was playing with the two captains, basically, of the team last year, and I think that brought me up. And then by the time I got to Gabe last year and then Gabe this year, it's it's just comfort comfortable, and I think we're just playing straight-up doubles, and it's just – it's. I think we got a good thing going. I think we're not too crazy, but we're not too relaxed either on the doubles court. Pretty so, comfortable. So at one point you were tag teaming with Logan Schneider for a couple mm -hmm. of matchups. Is that a little bit different? We get so used to playing with Gabe, and then all of a sudden, okay, a little switcheroo for a couple of matchups. Uh, no, Logan came in. He's a really good doubles player out of high mm -hmm. school. I think uh, playing with him in the ITA tournament and in the beginning of the season, I think. Uh, we were looking to play the whole year, but uh, Logan has like really good talent, and so they moved him up to one because I just spread the talent up around. But uh, it was fun playing with Logan. I think we clicked right away. We uh, we made, we won two rounds in the uh, Midwest Open in the fall, which is not easy to do. We yeah. beat some tough teams, and yeah, yeah. What are some of you know? Maybe this is more obvious, but what are some of maybe the challenges? Doubles versus singles, where in doubles you're kind of relying not only on yourself but on a, on a teammate to cover his territory. Versus singles, where you got your whole side of the court. Yeah, d doubles is for sure a uh, tactical game. You have to you have to know where to hit the ball. You have to think fast, but see the ball slow. And if you go too fast or if you go too slow, you can the point will be over like that. So I think doubles is it's a lot more pressure. It's a lot more. You have to be more precise, whereas singles, you know, you miss by a couple of feet, you're not going to give up the point right away, whereas in doubles it can be, it can end the point just like that. Now for you individually in doubles, you're 12-4, and four, teaming with Gabe, you're 1-1 one one with Logan. How do you feel so far your sophomore season has developed? Um, I think it's gone very well. I think um, this year more so I've improved my uh, return game more so than last year. I think last year I really relied on my partners to, like, carrying me throughout the match and returning and whereas this year I feel like I can compete on uh compete with uh just about anybody talk about your return game being one of your focuses perhaps during the off season you know you had a great freshman year you're part of all conference and doubles you played number six singles how do you go about okay so you go into the off season that return game being a focus what exactly were you up to what, what did you do to maybe improve that area well, I um, I did play a lot of doubles in my um, town league. Uh, we we have a decently competitive men's um, league in town where I live, and um, I just grinded and I just made sure that every return was the same. I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't like play different because I was playing against different people or like maybe a different skill set. It was just keeping that consistency throughout the throughout the summer of hitting the same exact return every time. Up next. We talked about the Falcons are, are going to get ready for the NAC tournament. That's in Madison, up first, MSOE Sunday. Your takeaways, okay, the first meeting against MSOE was back on the 20th of April, an 8-1 Falcons win. What do you remember about round one between the Falcons and Raiders? Um, it was definitely tighter than we expected. I think um, they were coming out ready to fight, and we were coming out focused on Illinois Tech. So, like I said, we were. I think our heads were elsewhere. We, uh, we had a pretty 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 um intense practice the day before we didn't have school that day we uh we went out and had like around a two and a half hour practice and i think i don't think it drained us but i think we were we were just kind of we we didn't expect what msoe brought and then but we pulled it out i think we're, we were just good enough to be able to say hey like even if they come out fighting i think we can still easily take them but i think in the conference tournament indoors at madison very comfortable place for a lot of us. I think uh, we'll come out focused, and it won't even be as close as it was. 
going to ask you, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of times, and, and I mean, you're human. I mean, it, athletes are human, and, and I know the Falcons want an opportunity to play Illinois Tech again, but mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is, MS will be first. You have to be focused on the Raiders. But is that difficult at times, you know? Yes, you have to focus on MSOE, but mm-hmm. in the back of your mind, I mean, you know you're that close to getting an opportunity maybe to face Illinois Tech yeah. again. Well, I think um, this team's grown since last year. I think we, uh, we kind of accepted that, like, the only team that can compete with us is Illinois Tech, and I think we know, even if it's in the back of our mind, I don't think it'll affect play in Madison because I think when we, it's just when you get to the conference tournament, it brings that focus, that extra excitement. It's just you, there's not going to be a lot of screw-ups like there was that day. And on the 20th, I think it'll be it'll be easy picking. So. Well, as mentioned, if the Falcons do take care of MS, so we it's on to the final against either Illinois Tech or Edgewood. Illinois Tech, as mentioned, was a 6-3 loss for the Falcons back on the 6th of April. When you look back at that matchup, is there one or two areas you can point in and be like, okay, if we can fix that area, we can have more success? Yeah, um, the goal is the doubles. I mean, we didn't win a single doubles mm-hmm. match that day. Uh, I mean, Nolan, like I said, was really close to winning. I mean, we p- pulled out three singles victories. I mean, given we won one match and Nolan pulled – doubles match and Nolan pulls out his victory at the win so I mean I think it was close I think they're a really good team and I think we're gonna have to be incredibly sharp but I think uh, getting two or one even one doubles victory and fighting like we did in singles again I think it's very possible that we could win. Falcons have won the last two NAC tournament titles looking for that three-peat here this weekend you mentioned okay the the event is in Madison and in a lot of the the tennis athletes use the Nielsen tennis complex you're from Watertown is it special kind of being a little bit closer to home there and friends and family getting the opportunity to play almost in your backyard, so to speak? Yeah, um, when I played in high school, my subsectionals, my sectional state was all at Nielsen. <laughs> yep. um, this winter, I played at Nielsen probably around, I put up 10 hours on the court in Nielsen. I think it's just, it's the, it's the place to be. It's cool. It's, it's a great facility. It's just, it's, and it's just so, it is like, it's like a second home. So I think playing there it just it just you know it feels like a home court advantage almost outside of concordia are you, are you playing tennis essentially year round basically yeah uh steve actually did really well getting us indoor courts this year too and i think uh that's something i've always lacked in my uh playing career were uh like consistent indoor courts and i think that's why we came out so sharp against like i would say a lawrence this year who we beat 8-1 last year i think we lost four or five to Lawrence, okay. but we, we came out there, we took care of business. I think indoor courts and playing year-round has really helped us a lot this year. I think we came out really sharp in the beginning of the year. So, I well, mentioned from Watertown in, in high school, you played tennis, football. What made tennis your college sport? What made that your, your, your top sport? Um, well, I originally played basketball and football, like you said. I, uh, I was a three-sport athlete. I picked okay. up tennis freshman year of high school, and uh, it kind of I kind of just grew to it, and then... Going into sophomore year, I would wake up at 6 a.m., go to football conditioning. I'd come back home, play tennis for four hours, <laughs> and then at nighttime we'd go to summer league basketball. So I think, You slept well at night. Yeah, I did. <laughs> but um, I think what really propelled me in tennis was, like, I'm a very independent, independent guy, and I think knowing that it's all on me helped me a lot in tennis, and I think and then I really just grew to tennis. Like, it really just kind of pulled me. Like, that was my main attention after sophomore year. And I think it was kind of just like – and I'm not – and in high school I had a very skinny frame. I wasn't – I was good at football, but I wasn't physical enough to play, like, varsity football. And same thing with basketball. I just – I couldn't make that next step. But where tennis, I just said, like, I think I can take this farther, and I did. So. You mentioned you picked up a racket your freshman year. Was that the first time you played tennis, or you played tennis maybe just for fun in the past? Um – I mean, maybe once or twice before high school, but okay. that was like the first time, basically. So how did that come about? How did you all of a sudden decide, you know, I want, I want to give tennis a shot? Well, um, in in middle school, I ran track, but in high school, I was track really wasn't for me. It was just a lot of pressure. I didn't like, I couldn't handle the adrenaline that comes with track, and so I I chose tennis and for my spring sport. I just kind of said, I'm playing tennis and just like some random sport and then it just turned out to be just the one for it. me yeah <laughs> did you have success right away uh n- no i mean you, i mean i mean i beat players like i was very athletic at that time so i i beat players who maybe weren't as athletic but people who could play tennis i mean they would they would wipe the floor with me but <laughs> i mean <laughs> you know we all grow so kind of looking back at you know last five six years playing the sport 
What's your favorite aspect about tennis? Why do you love it so much? Oh, uh, like I said before, just like it's all on me. Even in even in doubles, I feel like you know, in doubles, like you can control. I feel like you can control a doubles match with one player, you know. And I think that's evident. Like when we play, like uh, when we pl like say we play teams like MSOE, like sometimes there'll be one guy who's like, okay, this guy, like you don't want to hit to this guy, but if you do hit it to this guy, he can win a doubles match for that two two people, you know. So. So when did reality kind of kick in that, hey, you know what, I could potentially play this sport at the collegiate level, and then how did Concordia come about? Uh, so junior year, I played one, that's when I jumped for, in high school to one singles, and I, uh, I uh, kind of just, like, I started playing really good against top-level players, and I, I knew I wasn't going to be, like, a D1 athlete, but I was thinking, uh, you know, if I keep at it and I keep, keep grinding, I think I might be able to make a lower level of uh, a D3 team here locally and uh, originally I uh, so I, I'm going into actuarial science I'm also mm -hmm. in band so I, I just wanted kind of to be like available to the things I do so Concordia kind of fit everything I wanted to do so I'm in band here I actuarial science uh, tennis just it all worked out very nicely well-rounded yeah. schedule <laughs> and as we get to know Cole a little bit better in our final segment do you have a pre-match routine? Anything you do before a match, every match? Uh, for tennis, I mean, it's all about keeping your mind clear. So for me, there is no pre-match routine for tennis like there was for football and basketball where I'd, I listen to the same set of songs. Where tennis, it's like I just I just try not to think. You know, you just you kind of be left alone. No, I just okay. I, I mean I just try not to think about the match. So then when I'm on the court, I'm just level-headed rather than too high or too low. Because you can be too high in tennis be too aggressive and it can cost you a match real quick. So. What type of music you turn to? Uh, for tennis, not, not not a lot. Usually whatever's playing in the van on the way there. So, so if you never played tennis, football, basketball, and you had to play a sport, what sport? Uh, Is there a sport that you wish you maybe would have tried? Oh, oh yeah. Outside of the three that you have? Um, when four, I was really little, check. my parents put me in soccer, and I was really good at soccer, but for me, I... Uh, the one I just lacked uh, foot skills. Like, like I have really good hand-eye coordination, but my I don't know the foot-eye coordination wasn't very good. So, but I was, I don't know. I wish I would have maybe tried more into it, but it kind of conflicted with football because yeah. my, my brother played football and it was kind of just like I was like behind my brother all the time. Like I'm gonna do what he does, kind of just following his footsteps. And I maybe could have played soccer. And did he ever try tennis? Oh uh, yeah, so his senior year, I convinced him to play for our high school team because we needed some guys. And uh, he uh, he's tall; he's six foot five. So <laughs> he he he's naturally picked it up very very quick. Do you have any hobbies and or, and or talents? Uh, well, I I play an instrument. I play the trombone in, in band. How um, long have you been? Uh, that? Since sixth grade in middle okay. school, so pretty long. Um, I mean, I play video games, but I mean, I'm decent, but. I wouldn't say I'm like a next level game. <laughs> Do you have a nickname? Uh, no. Favorite food? Uh, chicken parmesan. Okay. It's breakfast time. Do you have a favorite cereal? Or what's uh, your go-to for breakfast? Well, Reese's Puff at my home. Here it's Lucky Charms. <laughs> Lucky Charms. <laughs> Are you a morning person, night person, or both? Uh, I I have to say both because when I'm in school, I'm up till I'm up late and awake late. Whereas in in the summer, where I'm going to bed at like 10:30, I'm 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 a morning person. I'm I'm ready to go at six o'clock in the morning. Well, so. and, and judging by your high school schedule, you had to be yeah. both. I mean, you're getting yeah. up early and going to bed late. Yeah. Do you have a favorite pro sports team? Uh, okay, that's tough. I'll just hit the Milwaukee Bucks. Okay. I've been following them this so, year. So, with that being said, you have a favorite pro athlete? Uh, on the Bucks, well, pro athlete it would be Roger Federer okay. for tennis. Yeah. So it's a date. When you you know you you look back at, at your athletic career, whether it be high school, before that, college, do you have a top athletic achievement and or milestone? Yeah, uh, for me, I uh, when I started playing tennis, I uh, my sophomore year, I played this guy from Beaver Dam. He beat me twice in the regular season. We uh, came to playoffs at the end of the year. And I just said, like, I'm not losing to him again. Like, he was a really good player. He played for a really long time. And I'm like, I'm not going to lose to this guy. And sure enough, I, uh, I beat him in straight sets in the subsectionals. And um, there, was, there was one point where he hit an overhead. And I ran, like, straight backwards, got it, like, to the net, like, lobbed it up. And he thought the point was over because I hit it, like, straight up. And then it, like, just trickled over. And it kind of just, like, I just think of that point all the time. Like, you know, like, 
I need that kind of effort like all the time. That's what I think of when I'm playing like teams like Illinois Tech. I think like, it's got to be there. <laughs> I think it's funny because there's a team in this show. It seems like with various athletes that we've talked to, it always comes back to for some reason beating the Beaver Dam Golden Beavers. There's a lot of a lot of athletes that have Beaver Dam as a, as a rival. <laughs> So only a sophomore, and you look at your, your college career as you continue forward, as you wrap things up, big picture. You, you have, you know, career goals, stuff that you, you know, aspired. Not only just, you know, next week with trying to beat Illinois Tech and bring home another tournament championship. But how about you individually? You know, a couple more years yeah. left of college, you have goals for yourself. I mean, I, Steve brings in good talent, and, you know, he, he had a lot of good recruits come in this year. Uh, I think for me, the goal every year is just to play. Like it's mm-hmm. to not drop my level or not drop my physic- like physical like status to like not play. So like mm-hmm. for me, it's just staying in that lineup, you know. So like, like it's what what can I do for the team more so than like I'm I'm not very like a, I need I want to do this like I want to compete this I want to I want to do what's best for my team is what I always think so. Well, Cole, thanks a lot for your time here this morning. Best of luck this weekend in Madison as the Dogs look for the three-peat in the NAC Men's Tennis Tournament. That's Cole Warning. Thanks to Steve Crook, the softball head coach, as well as they get ready to uh, go for their third conference tournament championship this weekend in Montgomery, Illinois. Thank you for joining us. Be with us next Tuesday. We're scheduled to be joined by someone from baseball as we preview the upcoming NAC Baseball Tournament, which once again will be at Cap Gold Park next Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday. Also, we'll be joined by the Director of Athletics, Dr. Rob Barnhill. Thanks to all. Until next Tuesday, you've been watching the Falcon Focus Podcast.